Today I'm gonna teach you how to take this and turn it into this. Or this, and this, and this, and this. Well, you get the point, and this. I'm gonna teach you control net. And this is not just any control net video because there are a lot of them out there. And I've made a few myself. This is control net for flux specifically. And there are also many control nets available. So which one should you choose? Are they different from stable diffusion control nets? Yes, yes they are. Will the results be better? Yes and no, but I'm going to teach you. You're going to get a free workflow that you can use and also a full guide to how to get started. So let's get on with it. Oh, and what do you call seagulls that fly over the bay? Bagels. So today I'm going to show you this workflow, but don't be scared. This is fairly simple. It's not as daunting as it looks. So what you got going on here is you're loading an image. Here we have this woman and this island here in the background. We're setting our size of the image. We are loading our models. So we are loading ball well, flux here specifically. We are writing a prompt here in the second step. So we actually have the steps here. Load image, write prompt, select control nets, press Q. Fairly simple, right? So we're writing the prompt here. In this case, we have a woman fashion model in pink dress. Background is magical fantasy world. And then we have a bunch of control nets. So this is where it looks kind of messy, but we'll actually, it's fairly simple. So you can enable and disable control nets like this. And if you've seen my previous controller video for Stable Diffusion, this is the same-ish workflow, just adapted to Flux, but uh, with, uh, with a few changes. So if you wanna run Canny, for example, you just select here and, oh, Canny has been enabled. Now, this is a little caveat. And when it comes to Flux control nets, there are lots of models available. Uh, well, not lots, but there are a few available, but there are no perfect ones. But what I did is I've I'm gonna give you one to use. So instead of having like one, two, three, four, five, six different models to download, you're gonna download one. And this is for ease of use right now. Whenever there are six different great controller models, you can just download those and put them in here separately. But right now we're using one, we're getting into here. This, so this is the output. This is where the generation gets done. And then we have an optional upscaling step. So this will be disabled by default, but if you want your image to be twice as big or bigger, this is where you enable that. So let's go back to the start and let's go over this, right? So we talked about loading an image here. So this is where you're dropping it in. And if you wonder where can I get this beautiful workflow, there's gonna be a link in the description. It's also from here, right? If you go to the guide, it's a free guide. Don't worry about it. Don't be scared about the link. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, Flux control net. And once you got this up, you need to go into your manager, install missing custom notes. It's gonna be a bunch here. I have them installed, but you're gonna have one here, two here, maybe three here, and you just click them or select them all here and press either install here or install down here. You're setting a size currently 1024 by 1024, which is the Flux default. I have a handy little resolution table here so if you want to see the default resolutions for flux and the aspect ratios, you can pick sizes from here if you don't want to do it uh, by yourself. We are loading a GGUF flux model. Where do you get that? Well, glad you asked, it's my friend. So you're going to go into your manager, either up here, or if you have the old UI, it's going to be on the side here somewhere. And I can actually show you the old UI. So if you're using old UI, it's gonna look like this, and then you have the manager here. So this is the manager. Let's head back to the new UI. Uh, so what you're gonna do, it's go into your manager. If you don't have the manager, I recommend that you um, follow my how to install comfy guide. So just search for how to install comfy, Sebastian Camp, and there you go. Model manager, and here you can actually search for uh, Flux Q8, for example. And here we have Flux Dev Q8 and you can just press the should be see, see there's an install button here and there's a little green check mark here and that's because I've already installed this so you can just press install this uh, if you have a good GPU you can use the QIT model so when it comes to GGUF and flux models they range from Q1 to Q8 Q8 is the best one so the beefier machine the better model you can use if you're not sure Maybe start with like Q5, for example. Just make sure, oh, there's a lot here. Well, make sure that you read what's going on here. You want the dev, not the schnell. 
So we want the dev one, and then you can just pick the, the top one here, that's fine. But for this, uh, I'm gonna use the Q8, so I have that installed. And you're gonna do the same for the other, right? So uh, the VE is ae.savetensors. So where do I find that, Seb? Is it in the model manager again? Well, you're a smart one. So ae.savetensors, you don't have to type all that out, but you can actually find it here, ae.savetensors. And it's a little green check mark means I have installed it. And you can too, if you press the install button that is here for you. And the same goes for the other models as well. So you have the clip L and the, the, the T5 XXL here. You will also have download links if you prefer to do that way. So if you follow the link in the description, you're gonna get to this page, Flux Control Net Ultimate Workflow. And here you have text and images of how to get everything running, right? You remember this from the, the video we're just doing? Yes, it's the same one. And this one, Dev Q8, yes, it's the same one. A safe tensors, yes, it is the same one. And those can be found in the links here. And also where to place them if you want to do that manually. So two ways to do that. If you are loading a lower end Q model, then I recommend that you also load a possibly a lower end text encoder. What does that mean? Well, this is FP16. There's also FP8. Here I have one called FP8. Here's another one called FP8. Just have one that's named T5 FP8. Well, actually these two should be the same. You can find them in the model manager and also in the links. If you download them and you can't find them in the list here, you're clicking here and does nothing. Well, you have to click the little refresh button and that one is up here. So if you click refresh, you're refreshing everything and then you should be able to find stuff in your list if you have downloaded them. If you're trying to run the workflow and this turns red, this is wrongly selected. So just go to this red border node, click here, select one of the models and try again. The reason for that is that, well, maybe when I created this workflow or someone else created this workflow, they might have saved their models in a different folder than you have. So that's why you may have to go in here and reselect them. We have optional LoRa's. They are disabled by default. So if you want to use them, you can just go here, right click, bypass, control B or command B. It says here, optional. So this is if you know what you're doing. If you have no idea what this is, just leave it as it is. You're gonna be fine. Okay. We have got most of it installed. You might want to write a prompt. I have woman fashion model in pink dress. Background is magical fantasy world. We also want to load this control net model. And oh, here's a lot of them. This is all the control net models I have installed. But you're just going to need one. And that is, well, actually it's, it's this one. Control net union pro safe tensors. But I've done, downloaded this one manually. And this one from the model manager. And that's why I have two. By default, this one is loaded. And that is from the model manager. So if you go into the manager again, model manager, and search for control net union pro, you can see here that you have control net union pro two options. How are they different? Well, if you remembered from our previous talk, there was an FP8 text encoder and also an FP16. And you can see here that FP8 one here is smaller than the other one. So if you're on a lower end machine, you can download that one. If you're on a higher end machine, you can download this, the big one. Good, the good thing is we just need to load one of them, uh, no matter, matter how many control nets we're using. So get one of them and then make sure it's loaded in here. And then you are basically ready to go, except for this last step. If you uh, want to upscale, there is, is an upscale model here and I'm using this, the Nomos one. If you click here, you're going to see all your available upscale models. If you want this one specifically, this one is not available in the model manager. You can find this in. So if you just uh, con control F Nomos, you can find, you can download the Nomos upscale model at this link. Uh, put it in your models ESR GAN folder. And that should have all of the installation finished. And what you can do now, make sure that you have refreshed and all the models are selected. You have loaded an image you have written a prompt, you can press Q and you will see your generation taking place. And here I have a different image. It's still a pink woman. Well, it's not a pink woman. It's a woman in a pink dress and also pink hair here. But let's talk a little bit about the settings. So there are not a lot of settings that you need to worry about because as this workflow is prepared, it will work out of the box with the settings provided. But if you're 
not new to control that if you've been using control before you might want to look at, at these settings and the strength and the start and the end percent so the strength that is how much weight or how powerful this control it should be this is a slider between zero and well a lot usually people use zero uh, and one one is the default but when it comes to this control list specifically if you're running a high strength it's gonna break the start percent here that's when the start of the control net starts does that make this does that sound confusing well it's kind, kind of logical so when you are generating we are generating now for 20 steps if you're starting at zero well you're starting at well, zero. Frame zero, it's frame one, frame two, you, your control net is enabled. And then you can end your control net at a certain point in time. So if we set this to one, we are running control net for the full duration, the full 100% of those 20 frames. And you might think, well, that's great, Seb. Well, it was previously in Stable Fusion when control nets worked great. They don't yet in flux. So if you're running this, uh, it's not gonna look amazing. And I can show you why. So if we are generating this now, you will see it coming in here live. We are now running this for 100%. It actually, that's weird. Okay, so let's increase the strength, right? Oh, let's set it to one, which is a default powerful strength. So we're running this for strength one, 100% of the generation. And you can see here, oh, you might be looking here and say, oh, it works. We're uh, in the preview here. We're seeing the hand and the woman looks to be in a good position and you're correct, she is. But once we get the final result here in a second, you will see, oh, what's this mess? This is not what I'm looking for, right? And that is why with these control nets, you have to be very specific with your values. And that's why we're running this only for 20% of the generation. And then we're letting flux take over, so to speak. So in the preview here, we can see, okay, control net is working and it's running for 20% of the duration. And then we're kind of dropping the control net. We're stopping the control net and Flux is taking over and cleaning up the image, so to speak. So this is a, a hacky kind of solution, but it works for now. And this is the way you have to do it for now until we get better new control nets. And compared to the, uh, the old result, you can see this one is much, much better, right? And depending on what control and model you're using, these values might be different. So I put a little note here. If you're using the InstantX Union, Union Pro, it's actually put in Union Pro around strength 0 0.7, 0 0.6. We had 0.6 now and percent 0.2. That's going to give you a good time. If you're using the Xlabs model, not in this tutorial, but if you're using it, I recommend a strength of 0.5 and end percent of 0.5. That worked well for me. And I also have a note here, flux controllers aren't working as intended and currently as high values break the images. And we are also not using Xlabs and instant X nodes for ease of use. And what that does mean, if you're testing a lot of other control net workflows, you might notice I'm using few custom nodes. And the same goes for all of these models, right? So let's say that we're using the open pose. What you can see here, we're actually still using the same control net Union Pro. We download it from the model manager and we're using a strength of 0 0.7 here and an M percent of 2. And if we run this, we're going to get the preview of your open pose and well, you see in, in a second the result of, of our image. But some smart viewers out there might be saying, well, Seb, I saw that there are custom nodes from Xlabs and Shacker and InstantX where you load this control net and then you select open pose or canny or depth or whatever. And yes, that exists, but I built this for ease of use. If you're getting the end result that you want, why complicate it, right? So this works with less custom nodes, less models. I kind of recommend that you use this for now until better control models are available. And it's as easy as that. Enable, disable, and if it's not working the way that you feel it should be working, well, you can enable multiple control nets. If you're getting the results that we saw previously where the images are broken, we'll use multiple control nets and lower the values because they kind of add up. Not as much as, a, you know, one plus one each equals two, but sort of a one plus one equals 1.3. You know, I'm just making these numbers up, but you get the point, right? And this doesn't have to be a woman. It can be anything, right? It can be a building. It can be this um, profile picture that uh, Comfy uses on his GitHub. So if we put in cat hybrid fantasy creature with 
long ears in a magical forest. We're gonna get something that looks like this, right? With the long ears and, um, well, let's see, actually. This is just a random generation, so let's see what we get. You can see from the preview, we're getting the ears. I don't think we got the, the cat kind of creature of it. Oh, we kind of did. Here we go. Let us see as soon as this is finished. Really should have prepared this, right? But uh, it worked out fine, even in this kind of anime style, even though we didn't prompt for that. So that's cool. So you can put in whatever. Architecture, cars, objects, subjects, whatever you want. There's also a little trouble shooting selection here. We talked about some of the stuff. Mold selection nodes turn red. Make sure your models are in the right folder. Refresh, reselect. Image is weird or ugly. Turn down control and strength or end percent. Workflow crashes or goes out of memory. Probably a lot of you will have out of memory issues. So load an FP8 control in the Union Pro. Load FP8 text encoders. Load a smaller flux dev. Kiki GTUF. You know, like talked about Q1 to Q8. And that should be it. You should be able to run flux control nets within Comfy as easy as possible. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. As always, have a good one. See ya.